McComb was among the first to describe good long-term results with primary nasal reconstruction. Here the desired dissection of the skin over the cartilage is carefully outlined. The scissors are introduced from the piriform aperture gingival buccal sulcus incision and the skin widely elevated from over the cartilages. This extends all the way to the nasal radix. A small incision is made at the labial frenum and this incision used to admit the scissors. The medial cur are separated from one another and the dissection carried out over the septal angle and particularly over the nostril apex area. A Keith needle is then placed at the nostril apex, brought into this dissection pocket, and then extended up and brought through the area at the nasal radix. A second Keith needle is placed just lateral to this, brought up through the dissection pocket again, and extended up to the nasal radix. As this suture is pulled up, a bolster is placed over its loop. The two ends are then used to pull the dome cartilage superiorly. Here a second such suture is placed further lateral to show the advancement of the cartilage into normal position. The nasal floor is closed. The vestibular web is obliterated again using bolsters. The suture is placed as described by Nordoff earlier. But in this case, rather than going through the same suture hole, a bolster will be used both internally and externally to maintain this advancement and positioning of the lower lateral cartilage. McComb shows several excellent long-term results with this technique, as shown here. Certainly this is a normal position of the lower lateral cartilage.